countries of the upper limb. Now, before we start, um, let's go directly into the where the branch of the aorta is. So we have the heart and we have the arch of the aorta. On the left, we have the brachiocephalic trunk, and then we have the left common carotid artery in the middle, and then the uh, left subclavian artery. We're going to look at the left subclavian artery in detail, and then we can kind of mirror image this to the right side. Now the left subclavian artery starts off in this segment here. So what's highlighted in pinkish slash purple is known as the left subclavian artery. Now the left subclavian artery usually ascends directly from the sternoclavicular joint, so the joint here that's between the sternum and the clavicle, and it extends all the way up to the first costal rib and mid-clavicular line. So these are the borders of the left subclavian artery. So if anyone asks you, they they start from near the sternoclavicular joint and end directly on top of the first costal rib in the mid-clavicular line. Now they give off three main branches. The first one, which is highlighted in purple now, is the internal thoracic artery. The internal thoracic artery basically goes on to supply everything in the superior mediastinum in this region. Then we have one more branch, which is known as the thyrocervical trunk, so thyrocervical, so around the cervical region, vertebral arteries. And then last but not least, we have the um, vertebral artery, left vertebral artery. You can see the left vertebral artery orig uh, originates from the subclavian artery and travels up through the foramen, so through the spinal vertebrates and supplies those muscles in that region there. So three main branches I want you to know from, from the subclavian region is the internal thoracic artery going down, highlighted in purple now. Then we have the thyrocervical trunk and then we have the vertebral artery. You don't need to know the specific, for example, the branches of the thyrocervical trunk because in anatomy, gross anatomy models, you might not be able to see them on the actual human body itself. But for exam purposes, you can go into detail, but in this video, I'm only going to stay with the basics. So after the subclavian artery, we have the start of the axillary artery. The axillary artery extends, or less from the bone perspective, it starts again in the mid-clavicular line, in the first costal rib, so superior to the first costal rib, and it extends all the way down up to the top of the humeral scapular humeral joint, so the, between the connection between the scapula and the humeral, just above it. Now this gives off very important branches which were important and most anatomists usually know this quite well because they can probably see it in the gross dissection hall. Now, the main branches that I want you to know is the first branch, highlighted in purple now, is the superior thoracic artery. This usually goes on to supply the pectoralis minor and the major, but not so much of the major, mainly the minor. Then we have the next branch, which is highlighted in purple here, thoracromial, so the acromial joint near the acromial, thoracromial artery. So first we had the superior thoracic artery, then we have thoracoacromial artery. Now we have what's known as the acromial branch. So this is basically a branch of the thoracoacromial. So if you zoom in, you can see the thoracoacromial um, thoracochromial gives off two branches. You don't need to know it in that much detail. So from the axillary artery, the main things I want you to know is this one, lateral thoracic artery. This goes on to supply the muscles of the inspiration, so the lateral chest muscles. So i.e. gives off the pectoralis as well as the transverse abdominis as well as the everything that you, all the muscles that you need for expiration and inspiration. The next main one I want you to know from the axillary artery is the anterior circumflex humeral artery. This is anterior because it's in front of the humerus and this is very important, it will always come up in your test. This is the anterior circumflex, so likewise just behind it we have the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Then we have the subscapula because it goes towards the bottom of the scapula. And then we have the, last but not least, circumflex scapular artery. So these ones, they're very important because these three arteries people usually like to highlight. So now we have 
on screen directly uh, very closely annotated you now is we have the anterior in purple anterior circumflex because it rotates around the humerus so it basically goes on to supply the shoulder if you imagine which muscle lays over this area is the shoulder muscle so the deltoids so we have the anterior circumflex humeral artery then we have the posterior circumflex humeral artery again supplies to the deltoid teres major teres minor long lateral heads of the triceps brachii as well as the glomerular humeral joint just you wouldn't need to know exactly what these arteries supply as long as you have a basic location idea of the location so we have the anterior and posterior circumflex arteries then we have another main one which is subscapular artery off the subscapular artery what we need to know is we have a branch called the circumflex scapula so circumflex scapula does not come directly off the axillary artery it comes off the subscapular artery then the subscapular artery then further divides downwards into thoracodosal thoracodosal artery so these are the main ones i want to remember the one here in the front was the lateral thoracic don't forget so this three junction here anterior posterior circumflex subscapular up to the purple here splits into um, circumflex scapula because it circumflexes around the scapula so if you can see it goes around and supplies the whole of the back of the scapula and then last but not least we have the branch going down which is known as the thoracodosal so the just to recap the axillary artery starts where the subclavian ends off so i.e mid clavicular line first costal rib all the way up to the glenohumeral glen glen joint of the humerus gives off three main branches which you, we want you to know the anterior and posterior circumflex as well as the subscapular which gives off further arteries the next one right which is very important to medical students is the deep now now we start the break you suppose this area here we have now what's known as the brachial artery which is what most of us would be interested in as anatomist now the brachial artery itself has many branches but it has loads of small small branches highlighted on the screen these will go on to supply the biceps brachii as well as the deep muscles such as the coracobrachialis or the brachialis muscle now the main branch i want you to know is there's a branch going down here known as deep brachial artery which goes posteriorly around the back and this goes through the canalis humerus in latin is known as the humeral canal so if the humeral canal is formed from the long head of the triceps the short head uh, <clears throat> the long head of the biceps as well as, as well as the lateral head so if, if if when you in the anatomy dissectional if at any point you see that the there's an artery running down in underneath the triceps this is the artery that we're talking about so this is known as the deep brachial artery the deep brachial artery is branched directly off the axillary so first and the main branch of the brachial artery now this is very important because once we flip this model around the deep brachial artery itself has two branches it goes on to form what's known as a middle collateral artery middle collateral artery supplying the whole of the posterior region of the muscles so for example the triceps and everything and then we have a branch which is here known as the deep brachial artery they they drain back into the original artery in this region into the radial collateral artery so let's just recap that i know this is too much for you to understand straight away so from the brachial artery we have what's known as the deep brachial artery then deep brachial artery gives off what's known as a branch known as the middle collateral and then it carries down into the radial collateral artery the radial collateral artery goes in and makes an anastomosis in this region known as a radial recurrent artery this they always like to clip so if if in dissection hall or in your in your anatomy uh, lab or anything if they have clipped or if they have labeled an artery near the elbow joint which is going backwards 
towards the posterior side, know that this is called the radial recurrent artery. That just for the radial recurrent artery comes in and they form in and they form a loop again, known as a radial artery. Now the radial artery can then split into both the brachial artery then splits in further both to radial and ulnar arteries. So hopefully that makes sense. Pause the video slowly and listen to what I say. I haven't got annotations on these videos because um, I haven't got the software as of yet to make the annotations. But hopefully when I do, I can make the video better. So thank you for watching.